I have lots of questions, like, about the war. But, yeah, well, but, you ask me all the questions you like. Yeah, because for me, it's something interesting. Yes. That, like, I would like to know more about. So, how old are you when you went? How old were you? Well, when I joined up, I, uh, I was uh, in high school in Ottawa. And okay. uh, one day, we just went out for a walk. My friend and I to get a Hamburg. And there was a line-up. And we, we knew somebody in the lineup, and I said to him, what are you doing there? He said, we're joining the Army. So we were a little crazy at the time. Anyway, I was 17, and I, I went to get in the, I said, let's get in the lineup. So we get in the lineup, and the long and the short is we were in the, in the Army in the afternoon. And what do you remember? Like, were you nervous when you went? I was nervous all the time. Yeah. No, in the war, but not before. I didn't, I never thought about it until I saw the beach. Mm. And, and, and then I was a little nervous. I wasn't in the infantry, I was in the artillery. And artillery doesn't go in the first wave. They, the, the infantry has to go and set up shop for you. So we, I went in about 10 days after D-Day, I think about 10 days after. And our first project was to take the Khan airport. And it took us three days, where three days we took the airport and then they, the Allies started using that. They had us pinned down pretty good, the Germans. And uh, we couldn't move too much, so couldn't even get our guns going because they had us pretty well pinned with artillery. And so they told us to dig in. Not very often you had to dig a trench, like yeah. as normal. We yeah, just yeah. slept under the truck or something. Anyway, I, we, I dug my hole, and then the next I slept in it that night. The next day it was kind of raining a bit. I remember seeing a bit of a tarp down the road, and I went to get the piece of tarp to bring up to put over the hole and. They start popping it around here and there. So I ran to my hole and there was two guys in it. They jumped in because they hadn't got their hole down, weren't close anyway. So when I got there, I was on top and was sticking over the ground a little bit. Shell hit about 30 feet away and then the blast, and when a shell lands, there's a blast, like okay. like a draft. Yeah. And it blew me out of the hole. That's why I lost. I, I wear all this artillery because it can hardly hear. Anyway, and I, and I got that ear busted. But now th this outfit here, the noise goes in there, but it takes it out and puts it over there, so I get twice as much. <laughs> so it's state of the art. So I survived that, and then, then I went to Calais. After we finished there, we went right across the top of Belgium over to the Eindhoven uh, and took the port of Antwerp. And that's where, on the way, I was in my Jeep. This is a different story altogether, but it was, it was rain and muddy, and. And it was, I, I, stopped, I saw two kids in the, in the ditch. So I stopped and one was, turns out to be about six and one was about four. And the oldest guy's name was Jan. And I, I picked them up and took them with me up to the, where our kitchen was and we washed them all up. And, and, uh, and uh, we kept them there. We had them with us for two weeks. They slept and everything right in the kitchen. We had nobody to give them to. I don't know where they ended up, but we gave them finally to somebody got them two weeks later. And I remember we outrun the kitchen and we were too, almost a day hadn't got any, any food because we're going so fast and the kitchen was back there. And um, I remember I said, we got to eat. I said, oh, I saw some chickens in a, in a pen over by the, I'm doing all the talking and you're, you're, you're anyway, so, anyway, so, anyway, we, I, I towed in, got a chicken and this lady was standing, I could see her yet, I had to have been dead if I, if she'd had a gun. Anyway, I took the chicken out and skinned them all up, got them all cleaned up and everything. We had nothing to cook them in, but we were using the Catholic church there for, uh, to go up and look and up the thing and this uh, French fellow we had with us, a French Canadian guy, he said, for me there. Come on, come on, come on, come on. Anyway, so uh, he gets the font out of the, where they christen the kids, you know, the, yeah. the water for the, and we took that and cleaned it all up. We put it in the, put some gas, so we boiled it up and cooked to eat the chicken. So that's, we had our dinner. So, so whoever gets christened in that church, there was a couple <laughs> of Canadians he ate out of it last year. So then we turned, went north. And that was tough going up because the, we're close to the German border, only 20 miles away, and they had all kinds of help, you know what I mean? And we, had, we went to Nijmegen from there, and, uh, and we got to Nijmegen, and then we went on to Arnhem, and back, back down to Nijmegen, and, we, and then we went 
I forget if it was before or after, we went back in Dappledorn. And we, I remember we slept in the Queen's Palace that day. There's a palace there, a bunch of us it was raining like hell. Anyway, we stayed there. The Germans cleaned up there. Then went back into Germany, and this near the end of the war, you see. And then, then I went right up to Wilhelmshaven, up at the top, and the war was over there. Do you have any like, medals well, these, from World I, War II? They, I put these, wait, no. I put these on because th this one here is a, a victory medal. Every, that way I came out with the groceries. Everybody got one of them. <laughs> so this one here, I'm a little proud of that guy, uh, the, the French government. It's the Legion of Honor. Uh, they gave that to everybody buddy, who was in on D-Day. And, uh, and um, it, it's a beautiful... It's a, yeah, it's pretty nice. Yeah, and it's solid, uh, it's, it's solid <laughs> silver. It's the same mm -hmm. on both sides. And, and um, yeah. I didn't get any... There's no bravery medals. We're just an ordinary guy. <laughs> and how did you feel when... Uh... You f when you heard that you won the war. I feel proud. Yeah. I, I'm proud mm -hmm. that I was able to do that. You know what I mean? When I got to Holland and I saw the situation they were in, I knew then that I had done the right thing. Fighting is not the way to d do a war. The best way to do is sit down and negotiate about it. It like spend some time thinking about what's going to happen. Mm -hmm. If you see somebody that's not making out, you know what I mean? Turn to him and help him, and and he'll, and he'll always love you rather than hate you, yeah. and he'll learn to be your friend. And by being your friend, that means peace. I got a long letter from a Dutchman just the other day in a parcel. His name is Vogel, Hank Vogel, Vogel, and he said, when I was a little boy, I remember the first word I learned was chocolate. He said the Canadian soldier gave me some chocolate and I'm returning it now. I'm 74 years old and I'm returning it to you with a little bottle of bowl, bowl. So it came in the mail. And, and I had some of that chocolate last night. So it was, a, it bring the tears to your eyes when he yeah. say that, you know what I mean? Because I remember the little guys running around there, all ordinary guys like yourself, only some were younger. And they just admired us, you know, because uh, we had demonstrated freedom to them and love. We'd just take those little Dutch kids and hug them all up, you know, instead of treating them like the Nazis did, you know? Mm -hmm. So in answer to your question, that's what you gotta do. You have to portray peace and love and, and, the, and, the, and enjoy freedom. And always look to the other little kid that isn't as fortunate as you. That's the story. I don't know if you already have one, but it's a special coin of oh, D-Day. Oh, I don't, I don't have that coin. You don't have one? That's a D-Day coin, is it? Yeah, we just got oh, it no, this I morning. Did. Hey? That's lovely. You giving that to me? Yeah. Oh, dear. Thank you, thank you. You're welcome. Merely give you a hug. Thank you, you're a fine young man. I like your hair. Thanks. Oh, yeah, I like that. That's good. <laughs>